Yeah. Okay, so we talked a little bit yesterday about what it means for two functions to be inverses. Okay, one of the ways that we could check was to compare x and y values. Okay, if you have an x and y uh, coordinate from the original function, then the inverse is just going to flip those around. That's one way to check and see if functions are inverses. I also showed you the symmetry along the line y equals x. Here's a third relationship between functions and their inverses, and this is why we do this directly after we talk about compositions. Because two functions are inverses if and only if. That means both things have to be true. Um, and it also means that if you know this is true, then they're inverses. Okay? Or if they're inverses, this is going to be true. Um, so the, the statement is that f of g of x, when you compose f with g, then the result is going to give you just plain x. And if you do g of f of x, then you're going to get just plain x. So remember, most of the time when we think compositions of functions, f of g and g of f gave us two different results, right? The order matters. Well, it turns out when they're inverses, if they're inverses, then both of them are going to give you just plain x as a result. <clears throat> so if you are asked if two functions are inverses, okay, I'm not asking you to go through the process of, oh, well, here, switch x and y, solve for y, and show me that it's the other one. I know you can do that. If I ask you to determine if they're inverses, I want to see the work that you have composed the two functions both ways and that x is the result in both cases. <coughs> so we're going to look at a couple of examples of how to do that. The first example here, what type of functions are these? Linear. Linear. Okay, these are linear functions. So we are going to check to see if these are inverses or not. So it doesn't matter which one you do first. I try and do f first, f of g. Okay, so f of g of x is going to be f of 1 half x minus 3. So my f function was 2 times x minus 6. Remember how we do this. Put parentheses where the x was. Plug in the expression you're plugging in. Then we need to simplify by distributing the 2. So 2 times 1 half is 1, so that's x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And we subtract 6 again, so that gives us x minus 12. Now, technically at this point we could stop because we don't get x as the answer. Um, but I am going to go ahead and do g of f just to show you um, that they are not inverses that way either. Okay? So g of f, we got x minus 12. We're supposed to get just point x if they're inverses. Okay, if we do it the other way, distribute the 1 half. We get x minus 3 minus 3. That gives us x minus 6. Both of these gave us something other than x. So no, they are not inverses. Now, as I was mentioning, technically, since the first one gave us something other than x, we could stop there. I went ahead and did the second one, though, just to be sure. Um, because if I got x for the second one, I would go back and check my work for the first one just to make sure that I didn't make some mistake in my simplifying, because that, that is possible, okay? So that's another good reason to do both of them, even if the first one doesn't give you x. Okay, uh, now let's look at a cubic function and a cube root function. Now we saw yesterday that those uh, typically are inverses, a cubic and a cube root, uh, but maybe not necessarily the way that they're set up. Is that true? So, f of g of x. So, g of x is the cube root of x minus 1. 
f was x cubed, so put a set of parentheses, cubed, plus 1, plug in our expression. Okay, now, yes, the cubed and the cube root are going to cancel. Now, when you're doing this on your paper, I want to see each and every step because I want to see that you understand the order this happens in. So the cube and the cube root cancel, so we've got x minus 1 left, and then there's plus 1, and then the minus 1 plus 1 cancels, so this ends up giving us x. So condition number 1 is fulfilled. Just because this one gives us x does not guarantee that these are inverses. You have to do g of f of x as well. Okay, you have to do g of f of x as well. So... Let's plug f of x, x cubed plus 1, into our g function, which is the cube root of x cubed plus 1 minus 1. Okay, I replace the x with the x cubed plus 1. Now, this one simplifies in a different order. What simplifies first here? No. The plus and minus 1. Okay, the plus and minus 1 simplify first. Um, we can't take the cube root of things that are uh, being added and subtracted. So we, can, we combine the plus 1 and the minus 1. Then we take the cube root of x cubed, which gives us x. So since both of those equal x, then yes, these are inverses of each other.